Hi guys, how are you doing? Are you having a great day? Um, this is one of my favourite paintings that I've done for a while. It's in Art Rage 6 and it's taken from a photo I took quite a while ago. And the reason I waited so long to do the painting was uh, I just was not happy with the photograph and I kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it and putting it aside because I just didn't see the painting in it for quite a while until I started messing around cropping uh, the, the painting. So um, I want to talk about how I came to this bit of the photograph to paint. And then obviously I'm going to uh, paint a picture. So let's get into it. So this is a photo I took quite a while ago. And what attracted me to uh, want to take this picture was the fish on the floor which is perhaps a bit obvious really this was part of a an art installation which wasn't permanent it was just there for a short while and then it got washed away uh, in the rain and people trampled all over it and i guess the idea of the fish thing there was although there are other animals was the fact that that sort of green looking uh, metal shape is part of a waterfall and the water tumbles over that and I wondered if it had got anything to do with that but anyway um, I thought this would be uh, a nice subject to paint but looking at the photo it's all a little bit boring at the minute so and I, I crop my photos a lot but I wanted to show you I thought it'd be worth showing you um, the, the, the the process of this that I go through uh, to help you because maybe you want to start re looking at your photos look them a bit closer and think I could crop that and that would be an awesome painting because I think this is boring at the minute I think it's really boring the first thing I want to do is lose the sky I'm in um, affinity photo by the way to do this so I'm just going to select the crop tool and I'm going to be really radical and I'm going to begin by cropping it right across the middle of the of the windows on the sort of curved building and then i want to lose all of these buildings on the left i don't think they're adding anything to this painting at all or this photo so they're gonna go i need to lose this shadow at the bottom that's distracting so i'll probably push it up to about there but now i've got the wrong shape i want a more rectangular shape so i'm going to go like that okay and i'm liking that but i still think i can make it more dramatic so i'm going to crop it some more and i'm going to take off more of these buildings at the top and maybe just push this in a little bit more just touch the edge of that i'm looking at how they are cropping it to that curve might be quite interesting and I think that's got a, a really dynamic look to it. We've got a couple of people in there, so we've got some human interest. I could mess about with the contrast and all of that stuff with the photo, but I don't need to. This is fine. So uh, that's what I'm going to use now, the basis for my painting. So I'm going to flip over into Art Rage. So opening up Art Rage, I'm straight in there with a the roller and I'm getting some um, blue, sort of grey blue off gray color in there and then this sort of buff color and i'm kind of going to loosely stick with the palette on the photograph but i want to uh, add a few complementary colors in there and just uh, beef it up a little bit i really like this sort of verdigris green color of this waterfall um fitting i suppose you'd call it and I i'm guessing that's made of copper and it's probably weathered and gone green. So I, I really want to get that in it. And uh, basically, I just want to use these sort of muted colours. I'm not going for a strong palette. I've done a few paintings now with the fairground and the night sky that are all sort of in-your-face colours. And this one, I want it to be way more muted. So I'm using, once I'd finished uh, getting on the um, roller colour, I go straight to the normal square brush. I do like working with the square brush rather than the round brush. And I just sort of scrub these colours in and they sort of mix together and we get this pink and blues and things. And then I just um, 
put some perspective lines in just to give me the um, nice flatness of the pavement area. I did a similar thing with the chest painting I did a while back, uh, doing the same sort of thing. So I'm not going to go and, and paint in every slab or everything like that. That's not what this is all about. Now, the people, I create a new layer for the people. And I'm glad I did because the first person I put in the position where the second one I've just put in, the one behind, was standing. So I had to move him over. And then they were too far apart. I wanted them to be a little bit more connected and closer together. And then I thought, ah, they're not big enough. So then I enlarged them. So that would have been a pain if I'd have put it on the same layer. I'd have had to do a lot of overpainting. But that enabled me to get them exactly where I wanted them uh, first time. And then I started using my custom brushes and I only did a tiny bit. And I thought, you know what? This isn't, I don't think this is a thick paint type painting. So I give up on that idea. But what I did use was my Dirty Terps brush. And you can get these brushes for free. They're all available through my website. So I'll put a link in the description below where you can go off and get them if you haven't got them already. But I use this Dirty Terps brush to sort of get some texture on the old of the painting. Now, a lot of it will get overpainted, but there will be little areas where there'll be this texture showing through, which I think will be really nice. Anyway, as I said, I didn't feel that this needs to be a really thick paint uh, type painting. Um, I'm much more happy to use the default brushes that come in art rage six so i pretty much stick with the normal square and then the thick gloss but i take the gloss right down to zero i don't like the gloss effect so i just knock that off and maybe just pump up the texture a, li a little bit or the depth a, a tiny little bit so i'm really happy how this is sort of coming together it's all looking a little bit flat though at the minute so i'm gonna to have to think about shadows and things like that but i'm just sort of getting shapes in and now i'm working on this um these windows and architecture behind the waterfall just sort of over painting them again i pretty much paint out everything i did when i was sort of setting it out original i felt that they, all the windows and everything was in the wrong place and then i uh paint them in again in a different position but you know that's that's okay and um also if you notice i had to move the um waterfall make it a little bit deeper so it came down to the guy's knees it was sort of halfway across his chest so i had to lower that down a little bit and now i've gone into the thick paintbrush and you can see that the the brush strokes appear in and, and, and I think that was just the right texture I wanted. I'm using sort of complementary colours in there. Look, I put these railings in and they disappear a few times before I get them exactly as I want. So all, all of these uh, fish on the ground, uh, I'm not even thinking about them at this point. I just want to get the people in, all the architecture and get all the kind of the rest of the painting uh, as a, a scene as it would be without those uh fish that are painted on the ground and then i'm going to put them in right at the very end so i'm just working on the characters building up the shadows and then sort of up along towards the waterfall i think that's i need to get that little curve feel to it and uh, just so i'm hopping all over the place uh, i never ever stay uh, in one place when i'm painting i, I kind of jump from here to there get a little bit of uh, dark color underneath that uh, fountain i just think that that adds it gives it that little bit of depth and then i start adding a, a little bit more uh, green into that just on the end of it and now we're putting the uh the fishes in so i'm not using white i'm using a sort of an off white mauve color and I'm just sketching them in. They're on their own layer. I've not set it to multiply or anything. It's just a normal layer. And I'm just sort of sketching these in. Not, you know, I'm not paying a lot of attention to uh, getting them exactly the same as they are on the photograph. It's just a, a rough idea because they've gone now. They don't exist anymore. They've been washed aw away by the rain. Nobody will remember exactly what they look like. 
But I, uh, what I did happen was, you'll notice that um, I'm sort of running out of space to actually get the fish in. So luckily, I had painted them on one layer. So I was able to um, adjust that because I've just got the one fish in. And there we are, you see. I've just sort of squashed it all up a little bit just to give me a little bit more room to add in that um, a few more fish at the bottom. Because this painting, I'm going to call this one Walking with Fishes. Uh, and, and then I'm thinking, right, it needs this uh, trick with a multiply layer to get some shadows in, I think. It's, it's all looking a little bit flat right now. So um, any minute now, I'm going to be creating a new layer, I think. In fact, I thought I would have done it by now. Ah, oh, uh, I merged the um, white layer down of the, the fishes first and then just tweak the colours a, a little bit. And then I do this multiply layer where I start adding these shadows in. And you'll notice that... I've, actually, I, I've rubbed it out now. I've got the shadows of the, the guys going the wrong way. Um, by painting... Um, a color a shadow on the the ground on the multiply layer then lightening the color a bit you can overpaint it and sort of blend it in i was really chuffed with how i did that and then just to lift those fish out again i created one more final layer so i could start um putting in these um fish and all the other animals a, a little bit lighter just so they uh were a bit more uh visible than the were in the shadows but i set the opacity to about 50 percent of that layer so that the, sh the shadows that i'd painted underneath were glowing through so it, it wasn't just stark white over it and then i get it signed and uh, there we go that's pretty much it i hope you've enjoyed this painting uh, of the um men walking with fishes well it's actually just called walking with fishes painted in art rage 6 with pretty much the standard uh, oil brushes. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I've got lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.